Well, a good afternoon to you. This is the Central Florida Computer Society and the Windows Special Interest Group for Sunday, March 11th, 2018. Normally, we connect to the CFCS meeting in Orlando, and I'm in Bradenton, Florida, about 120 miles away. However, they're having some technical difficulties at the meeting, and they said they're going to uh, let us uh, get started, and they'll join us in progress because the computer they had, they did not check in advance, and it's in the middle of doing an update. Actually, it's not even in the middle. It was at the beginning. It was at 5% when I talked to them a few minutes ago. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We've got several people online from around the country, and then soon we'll also have the CFCS meeting uh, at the Castleberry Library in the Orlando area join us. So let me uh, uh, close out this. And these, uh, this is what we go by. Let me full screen this. I almost hit the wrong button here. You'll notice on the right-hand side where it says the WinSig newsletter sign up. This is from the Huey.net website. Uh, once a month, uh, probably only once a month, I send out a short newsletter. It talks about what, the, what happened at the last meeting with the link to the video and to the items that we did, uh, a link to the new meeting and to the page that will have the topics, uh, and then maybe another article, a short article. And what I'd like you to do is go ahead and uh, uh, sign up for that newsletter, and then I don't have to uh, worry about sending out an email to each of you. Uh, I'm using uh, MailChimp. If you are using AOL as your email uh, reader, you may have some difficulty in receiving it. I noticed that some people on AOL, it bounces. Not always, and not all, but occasionally depends upon the topics that we're talking about uh, and how it perceives it and whether it'll let it through or not. So please go ahead and sign up. And this, these are the notes for today. And let me make this larger. And I'll move it over here on the screen a little bit. Whoops. OK, these are the art articles. And I want to take the first one uh, and wait until the group in Orlando join us. So let's start with the how to use and customize the Windows Action Center. Now, are you familiar with the Action Center? If you come way over here, down on the bottom, there is a little button. When you click it, it opens up the Action Center. If there are notifications, they will be in here. And then down at the bottom are a number of items uh, that are either active or can be activated or settings that you can do. And you can collapse them down to one row or you can expand them to several. Now let's take a look at the article about how you can use and customize that. This is, an, by the way, the, the, the page on the website has a link to the articles that I'm doing, uh, that I'm showing you. So all of this information is readily available to you and I'm sharing it with you. So with the Action Center, Windows 10 finally provides a central place for notification and quick actions uh, uh, to live. Here's how to use and customize it. So you can view the notifications, and I showed you uh, toast notifications still reign in Windows 10. What happens, you'll see here, notice this is the bottom right hand of your screen. And so if something is a, a notification, it will come up for about six seconds, or if you click it, it'll disappear. But it will uh, come up and notify you of something that just occurred that you've got set up to be notified about. And so you'll see here, if, if there are no not notifications, it will be blank. And if there are, it'll be white with a number. And if you click that icon, it will bring them up. Here's an example of what it might look like if you had some notifications. There are several here showing. And then down at the bottom, uh, like I had, it shows you uh, uh, some of the items that you can see in that action box. 
When you click a notification in the Action Center, what happens depends upon the app that notified you. Most of the time, clicking a notification achieves something pertinent. For example, clicking on a OneDrive screenshot notification, and the example that they showed there, let me move back up, right here under, under OneDrive, it was a screenshot. Uh, when you uh, click on that, the screenshot will open and you'll see what the screenshot was. You can clear your notifications that way up at the top there's an X and you can clear them uh, either individually or you can clear all by clicking where it says clear all. So you can clear them one at a time by clicking the X or you can clear all by down at the bottom where it says clear all. You can customize your notifications by going to System in your settings, and then Notification and Actions, and then you can turn on notifications that you want. And you can turn off other items as well. Here's a rundown of the primary settings. Get notifications from apps and other senders. You can turn this setting off to disable notifications entirely. You can show notifications on the lock screen. Uh, you can show reminders uh, and incoming uh, VOIP calls on the lock screen. You can hide notifications when you're duplicating your screen, or you can show Windows welcome experience and get tips and tricks as well. well that's the action screen. I don't use it a lot, but I have found it very convenient. Let me bring mine up again. Uh, right now I've got location and I can set quiet hours, turn them on, turn them off. I can make it in tablet mode. Uh, you'll see that that's off. I can click on all settings and the settings will come up. I can put it in airplane mode just by one click in that action center. So play with that and, and, and utilize it. It's definitely part of Windows 10 you may not be using and you should uh, take advantage of it. Next item I want to talk about is the quick access menu. I've mentioned it a couple of times. I may not have referred to it as a quick access menu. And I probably, I know in one of the meetings, I either forgot to touch on it or I quickly touched on it and uh, we didn't really discuss it. So what is the quick access menu? Let's click on this article. This is from Paul Thorat's website. And let's make this bigger so we can read it. And get the ad off of there. Okay, like Windows 8.1, Windows 10 has a secret power, the user menu, really called the quick access menu. And you get to it by right clicking the start button. When you right click it, I'm gonna do that live for you when I do that I get this large menu and that's called the quick access menu let's talk about that a little bit here's what you're going to find uh, you'll find the following options programs and features this control this control panel is used to remove installed desktop applications view installed Windows updates and turn on the Windows features uh, uh, turn them on and off again I'm going to right mouse click under apps and features that's right here you just click on that it goes right to settings goes right to apps and features and you're there so very quickly right from that menu you can get where you want to go the mobility center is available only on mobile PCs so I'm not going to be able to show you this is a desktop this interface takes back to Windows Vista and provides quick access to many features of in interest to those on the go the power options again let me right mouse click and bring that up you got the power options here and it takes you to the screen where your power options are the event viewer uh, this MMC interface dates back to the early day, earliest days of Microsoft uh, Windows NT, and looks like it, but it can be very useful for troubleshooting. Again, let me right mouse click. Let's go to the event viewer. Come on, mouse work.
brings up the event viewer and shows me a whole bunch of things. You can spend some time looking at this, seeing what it does. It's got an overall summary. It's got recently viewed nodes, uh, some actions, and so on. Right now, it's trying to populate. There it goes. Now it's trying to do the administrative events. It's going out to a log and bringing in that information. As soon as it does that, that uh, hourglass will go away and it'll populate that window. I'm hoping. It's going to the witness client admin log. Eventually. <laughs> There we go, and it's there so you can look at some information. This is one of the uh, uh, dialog boxes that occasionally the scammers use to make you think there's something wrong with your computer. If you don't know this uh, event viewer and what it is, uh, you might want to take a look around and, and, and get an idea of what it does. And my mouse is stuck, so something's going on in the background. Okay. There we go. Uh, come on. I got to move, move something out of the way and the mouse is not cooperating as usual. Uh, let me alt tab. And then, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And that's not what I wanted to do. But anyway, we're getting there. My mouse isn't going to work, so I'm going to use the touch screen. And I think I just uh, closed my windows, too. I, I hit something that closed up everything. So uh, you still, we're still connected. It's just my, my windows went away. So let's go back to Huey.net. Is my mouse working now? Yeah, it is. Come on. There we go, and we want to go to Windows SIG. And there, to backtrack a little bit, and we're in the quick access menu. Too many things going on in this computer all at once. And then when you click the wrong thing to shut it off. Okay, so that is the <coughs> event viewer. Hang on one second, let me clear my throat. Okay, uh, next one is system. That uh, shows you the system box. If I right mouse click and click on system, you'll see that you, you get the about and all the other information about the computer. And you'll see that I am running the 1709 version and what OS build and so on, some other information about what I'm running. Then the device manager and network connections. And then disk management, computer management, command prompt. So if I want to get to the command prompt, I can do so. Just write my, my rouse, rice, right mouse clicking and click here on command prompt or command prompt for the admin is, is the next one. And then I, there's task manager is there, control panel, file explorer, search and run, and then shut down or sign out. So again, let me right mouse click that. Now what we're talking about here is the quick access menu by right mouse clicking on your start button. And so this is a good article that talks all about that and all of the different items and what they do. And then each of them I believe has a link for more information or you can do a search on them and get more information if you wanna know more about, for instance, the task manager. Okay. Um, Creating a Windows 10 system restore point from a desktop shortcut. Played with this a little bit this morning. Uh, and I'm not sure if I've got everything turned on right on my computer. <clears throat> but what you can do, you can create a desktop shortcut for the system restore. <clears throat> and this article tells you how to do that. And then where to put the information to create the, the, uh, the shortcut but it also will show you the settings that you need to do to set up uh, to have an instant restore button and uh, what you want to do for it. So this is a good article. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of the points on it, but you want to make sure that your system is making system uh, 
restore points when you're installing a new software or that you're doing an update. You want to make sure that you get a system restore uh, uh, point set before you do those things. So you can always go back to a previous point in Windows. Okay, let me come back here. I want to check and see if CFCS has joined us yet. And it doesn't look that way. It looks like we lost one person that was on earlier. But all the rest of you are sticking with us, so thank you. Okay, how to zoom and magnify. I'm going to leave this for right now. Uh, and how to get the file uh, explorer tabs uh, now in Windows 10. The only thing I'm going to talk about that is it's coming in the new update that I'm going to talk about very shortly. But if you're impatient, there is a program from Stardoc, who, who is the same company that makes fences uh, that I use and I've demonstrated before. Uh, they have a program called Groupie, and you can set up and uh, set up uh, and have tabs in your file explorer. And I'm looking forward to this uh, coming in Windows, and I haven't installed Groupie. I'm going to wait for the Windows update, which should be coming in the next few, starting to come in the next few weeks, and I believe that's what we're going to talk about next. I'm going to also skip the uh, 10 secrets that only pros know, and uh, we may come back to that today. And the Windows 10 next update will be called the Spring Creators Update. I'm going to jump to the last article. That seems to have a long list of items that are going to be included uh, as it is released and as I get information, I'll put together another presentation on the Spring Creators Update and do a full presentation of all of the new items and then all the things that were left out of this next update. But what I want you to do, what I want you to, to remember is the Spring Creators Update is going to be called uh, 1803. Well, this is the third month, but it actually is going to come out in April. And so it's really going to be 1804, but uh, it's going to say 1803. It should be available sometime in the first part of April. Uh, it will be rolled out slowly, so you may not get the update uh, for, the, for a few weeks or maybe even longer. But by now, you should be on the 18 or 1709 uh, version of Windows 10, which was the September, uh, August September version, uh, and it was released in October of the of Windows 10. Okay, some of the major updates is going to be something called the Windows timeline. Been a lot of talk online about this timeline. And I see we got, let's see, no, I was hoping CFC has joined us. They haven't yet. Um, the timeline really improves task view, a feature of all the recent versions. And I've demonstrated task view if you're not using it. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, nice feature. But if you're not a heavy-duty user, you probably will never use it or never need to use it. Uh, it's a visual representation of open programs showing when you when you use the shortcut in earlier versions. Just to show you what task view looks like, this is everything that's in desktop one, and, and I'm not using any of the other desktops, but I could have other desktops as well. Uh, but timeline improves it. Uh, visual representation, I mentioned, the feature is limited to select programs like Microsoft Office or apps like uh, Edge, Maps, Sports. Uh, Microsoft extend, uh, plans to extend the functionality to its mobile apps. Uh, one of the th some of the things it does, it, do it does a dyna dyna diagnostic data viewer. And if you use a local account to sign into Windows, you may recover that account from the lock screen in the new Windows 10 version. And then also Windows Defender Application Guard for Windows 10 Pro. Okay, some features it's skipping. 
Uh, Windows sets won't be introduced in the spring update. Sets introduce tabs to program Windows so you may merge multiple programs or apps in a single uh, window using tabs. This works similar on how programs such as Stardock Groupy work. So what I just said I was going to hold off, apparently they're not going to include it in this version. <coughs> so maybe I will play with gr uh, Groupy and, and demonstrate it in, a, in an upcoming meeting. Okay, uh, other changes in the next version of Windows 10. Accessibility. There's going to be eye control um, uh, improvements, easier navigation, quick access to common tasks, and pause function. The narrator is enabled in safe mode, and you can turn automatically hiding scroll bars off under settings, ease of access, and display. And then there's a bunch for gaming and media, uh, which many of you probably won't uh, partake, but some of you may find some of these. Uh, you can mute the audio for individual tabs, uh, passwords, never save passwords for sites. Uh, so you can do that. And then there's some miscellaneous. <clears throat> uh, you can access UWP options from start, uh, application execution, aliases and settings to run apps from the command prompt. Apt version numbers are shown now in settings. Uh, Bluetooth streamlined pairing and connection to certain Bluetooth devices. Windows 10 shows a notification when it detects a compatible device so users can initiate the pairing process from the desktop. Contana collections merged with lists. Hang on one second. My voice wants to give out today and I'm thirsty. Uh, you can customize a list of folders that you often use in the start menu, display preferences, and move to settings app. You can embed, embed handwriting panel, uh, fluent design effects across the board, fonts move to the settings application, and the fonts are offered on Windows Store, so you can add more fonts easily. Uh, localization changes. Uh, my people drag and drop, rearrange, change the number of contacts, and more. There's a lot of changes that are going to be coming. Then there's going to be several privacy and security changes coming. Uh, control access to pictures, videos, and document folders. Uh, diagnostic data, uh, data that was collected by Microsoft, can be deleted under settings, privacy, and diagnostics, and feedback. Diagnostic data, you can view the collected diagnostic data. Uh, file system access permissions, uh, you can block them from accessing the file system. There's privacy settings are sorted in categories and the settings app and so on. So there's a lot of settings changes and additions. Some enterprise specific, I don't think uh, most of my uh, uh, most of the people on my recordings and at the meetings are enterprise users, so I'll go past those. This is a good article to go through uh, many of those items. So I would suggest uh, taking a look at this article and kind of watching for the update. As I said, the update is scheduled sometime in April, probably early April. And it's, be, it's going to be called the Spring Creators Update. And you're going to see a lot of mention when it does get released. Or, or shortly before. Are you ready to connect? Are you ready to connect? Yes, we are hearing. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Okay, bye. Okay, it looks like CFCS has joined us. Um, not sure how they're signed in. So they're hearing me anyway. Uh, Stan, if you would, just send me a, a, a chat 
announcement uh, who you're signed in as. And so I can give you mic access. So I'm presuming you're on the screen somewhere. I muted and didn't unmute. Sorry about that. Uh, this is the uh, Relive the 90s Computing. And uh, the first item on here is the Microsoft Paint, uh, which is recreated in your browser. And I'm going to do that by clicking the, I'm going to right mouse click this from the article, and I'm going to open it up as a new tab. Let's go over to that tab. You'll see what it does. It actually is a copy of Paint. And I can do things. I can actually draw within the program. I can uh, uh, add things and paint things. So you can color your, your heart's desire in the old paint in a small window in, uh, uh, in Windows 10. OK, all of the tools. Uh, Stan, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but if you would somehow indicate who you are signed in as, so I can give you mic access so you'll be able to ask any questions from the hall. Other people can use the uh, chat box uh, or send me an email later and I will answer you privately. So all of the tools here are, let's see, uh, from the paint, from that. So let's take a look at uh, Windows 98. And let's see. Uh, thought Windows 98 I could click open as well. Uh, we'll see that a little bit farther down. Uh, Winamp is available. And again, there's a link in here from Winamp right here. I right mouse click, open it in a new tab. You go over to that tab. You'll see Winamp opening. And there's Winamp. You can get it to start some music. And you can uh, uh, tell it to start. Win -app. Win -app. It really whips the llama's ass. Win -app. Win -app. Win -app. It and you can adjust, make all of the adjustments you want. Uh, I believe you can full screen that. You can make it bigger and so on. So that's Winamp. If for those of you who may have used that many years ago, you can just bring it up in a, in a window under Windows 10. Um, the next item, let's see, that's Winamp. Oh, and you can also skin it as well. Remember Clippy? Oh, if you don't remember Clippy, you weren't, you haven't been around in a long time, but let me show you what Clippy is. You can open the link in the new tab. We'll open it. And you had either the Clippy, which is the one that's loading, and you can have different actions. Let's see where, where is he? Greeting. Goodbye. Okay, let's do Merlin because I know I had that working. Okay, where does it show it? Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, you can play with it. And uh, it talks a little bit about what it does and how it does it. 
for one, some reason or another, it's not working now. It did last night when I tested it and played with it, of course. Oh, there he is. He's down over here. I'm not seeing him because I got something blocking it on my screen. See him down here? So that's probably where Merlin will go to. Let me do Clippy down there. He went away. There's Clippy. Down there in the corner. All right. And uh, so if I do up a lookup. Uh, he's looking to the left. He's going to hide. Uh, explain something. You see he's changing. Get attention. And we can do that with Merlin as well. Uh, move left. Uh, congratulate. Announce. Get attention. Uh, stop listening. Read. So you can play play around with those. That goes back many, many years. Uh, back in the 90s. How about booting uh, three, Windows 3.0? Three, um, let's go ahead. We can do the entire operating system right here. I'm going to right mouse click that, open it, and kind of watch. That's how Windows 3 booted. Let's go this. This is resize the canvas. I don't know if I can do that or not. I haven't tried that. No, I'm not sure how to do that. But I can open up the control panel, I think. Do these work? No. How about here? Thought this this would work. Just kind of shows you a lot. No full screen. You know, I thought those buttons would work. Okay, I have to escape, get out of full screen. Anyway, you can play around with that as well. And that's how Windows 3.0 looked. For those of you around on those days, you can take a look at it. How about this is one I had fun with, and that was playing the 3.1 games on the internet uh, and then Windows 95. Let's do the let's do this one first. Uh, from my games are, let's see here. Anyway, you got a lot of games which you can run. They were 3.x games, and I haven't played with that particular one, uh, but Ski Free is one of them. But uh, window, how about Windows 95? Uh, let's take a look at that, Windows 95. Oh, I've got to click on it. There's Windows 95 and what it looked like. Again, they've got some information about it and so on. Uh, and classic Mac OS and things you can't bring back. How about this? Let's find where Windows 93, it says. Uh, there was no Windows 93. What they've done is they've simulated some things and some sense of humor things. But let's go over here. So this isn't a complete representation. But how many remember something like this? Let's do a new game. Episode 1. Uh, can I play Daddy Level 1? And so let's see. You use the 
you have to use your keyboard for this. I had to figure, try to remember how to do this. Use a space bar and the letter X to shoot at somebody. Uh, and there's ways to get. To I didn't remember how to do all of this, but uh, okay, let's. So I can go like this. This is the way we played games back in the days. Anybody in there? Let's see. This is the old-fashioned shoot 'em up. Let's see. And then space bar opens it. There's a guy there, and I want a letter X. Oh! There we go. Anyway, you're gonna have fun playing this for hours. And that's only one of the items. Let's go ahead and close that. There are several things that you can play here. Uh, and, and take a look at, and these all work. Uh, some of them, I don't know what they are. I just, I, I just picked, uh, picked and chose, uh, was choosing a few at a time. Uh, some are funny things, some are actual things. Uh, well, let's see, what's this, what if? What if I told you I don't have Facebook? Uh, uh, just some screens, some humor things. Uh, calculator. That's one of the early calculators in Windows, what it looked like. Uh, Anthology AVI, I'm not sure what this is. Hello, I'm Bill Gates. 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 Well, okay, we know that's Bill Gates. Dans mes études, donc là, Windows 93 a pu exister grâce à un petit groupe d'étudiants. Okay, so this is just an explanation uh, of what, what this thing does. Um, you can play around with some of these ski free. Okay, program's not responding. I couldn't get that to work. Yeah. Oh, and I want 316 times to do it. Okay, so we're going to close this out. But anyway, you can play around with some of those things. Kind of remember what uh, what old time computing was like. Uh, a lot of you at the meeting, uh, I remember as members when we had to go through those things when it, they were the current things. Uh, and if old games came with uh, Microsoft or more to your liking, you can grab Space Cadet Pinball from Microsoft's website. Uh, so there's some more things in this article. Uh, with the links are there, so I would go ahead and take uh, take a look at that. That's called Relive 90s Computing in Your Browser Right Now. Uh, I still don't know which, uh, which of the users on here is the CFCS group or whether they're even on uh, to give them a microphone so they can ask some questions. Okay, and... Uh, Let's see, what else did I skip over that we were going to go back and take a look at? Because we've got a little bit of time. Um, you there, the other John. Okay, thank you. That's free, John. Okay, so this is John. So we're going to unmute. Stan, can you hear me? I just unmuted you, I think. No. Now you unmuted me. Oh, okay. Huey? Okay, now I hear you. All right, fantastic. All right, well, are there any questions on that? Were you able to see it all, all all right? Yes, mostly. We saw it. Yeah, the Windows 90s uh, stuff. I thought that was a, a lot of fun when I went to it and brought back a lot of memories on how we used to have to do things uh, and how how we've really evolved and expect things to be really good. And then some of you I know were even members of my bullet board that go back pre-internet and how difficult uh, just messaging and how difficult downloading uh, pictures and uh, 
uh, files were back in those days. We've really evolved, and the young people just don't appreciate what we went through to get them where they are now. And I just thought it would be a lot of fun reliving. Uh, so take a look at that article. That's the first one on the list. Uh, and there's links to all of those that can bring it up. Uh, some of you may still be using some of those uh, older uh, operating systems because you just don't want to go creaming and uh, uh, screaming and kicking to Windows 10 or even 7. So uh, uh, please have fun with those. Uh, uh, Stan, we did talk about uh, what's coming in the creator's update. And, uh, and I talked about the quick access menu and the action center. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the 10 secrets that only the pros know. And that should wind us up. Uh, this is from Kim Commando. If you're not familiar with the Kim Commando show, she does a uh, three-hour show uh, on radio. And uh, she does some podcasts and articles and so on. She has some. She has some great stuff. She's got a lot of good researchers, and she posts a lot of really interesting information. Uh, she has a lot of ads on her website. As you see, company in the let's see if United I can States. shut that off without something else starting. Uh, snapping and Snap Assist is, is something that that I occasionally use. Uh, it was introduced way back in Windows Seven. It's a really cool feature. And let you automatically resize and position your open applications in a nifty little side-by-side -side windows. Uh, just mouse click and drag a window title bar to the edge of your screen and it'll automatically fill specific areas of your screen. You can have up to four snapped images and you can resize them. So you can, you can set it up so you have four screens or four open windows on your screen. Uh, but it will do it automatically if you just drag them to the side. I don't want to do it. Well, let's see. I can probably do it here. Um, no, I'd rather not do it because it'll it'll screw up what you're seeing and how I'm running this. <clears throat> but play with it. I, I, I do think that you'll enjoy using it if you're not. I mentioned task view and the fact that the timeline is coming to task view. And take a look at what task view is. Is actually virtual desktops, and you can have several desktops and switch between them. Macs have been doing this for years, and PCs finally have it now. The Alt Tab Application Switcher. I know Stan and I have talked about this in the past, but you can Alt Tab, and I'm going to do it now because I have a few things open. When I open Here's what I've got. I'm holding down the Alt key, and you'll notice that the uh, highlighted is the second window from the left. When I hit the Tab key once, it goes to the next window. When I hit the, it goes to the next, and then when I go to this, let's go back to the Notepad. When I let go of the Alt key, it pops up on the window. If I Alt Tab, Alt, and then Tab again, I'm going to come back. Again, over here to uh, the Windows 10 screen or the browser screen. It happens to be Chrome. Do it, and that will be the main window or what's on top. Since that's full screen, it will cover everything else. So your Alt tab is something when, when you can't see something and you know it's, you've got a pop-up window somewhere, if you Alt tab it, you'll see everything that's on your screen somewhere. And it may be hidden by something else, and you can't get to it. If you do the Alt Tab, you can find what you're looking for. It's behind there. So if we Alt Tab and we go back here to uh, uh, the Zoom box, uh, you'll see that it came up. I Alt Tab again, come over here, and that goes away because it now is behind uh, the browser window. So if you're not using Alt Tab, it's a tool that you uh, I find that often that I am I'm using it. Cortana is something I don't use a lot. Well, I've got Cortana. I got Alexa. I got uh, Hey uh, uh, Googie, and uh, you know there's there's so many. And and now I've got uh, Samsung. I got Bixby. Uh, I got too many virtual assistants, so I fired Cortana. I don't really use her or use him. Her. Uh, I don't use Cortana. 
but I am using uh, the Amazon one, and uh, I do use the one for my iPad, but I'm not using the one on my Samsung or I'm not using the Google one, and I probably should. But Cortana is, is available for you, and if you're not using it, you might want to take a look at it and, and doing it. Pinning apps. Uh, you can pin any app to the tiles. You can pin them to your, your start menu. And when you write, when you click your start menu, and let's go and let's find something here that I have. Uh, let's go into the Applian, Applian Technologies and let's do the uh, replay radio. This is one that you can uh, capture radio like you can with a DVR. You can do it if it's, if it's streamed through the internet. So let's right mouse click that, and you'll see I can pin it to the start button. Start, uh, I'm sorry, the task bar. So I click that, uh, it, it put it on the start button, so it's on the start screen, I should say. So it's put it down here and there it is. If I wanna right mouse click that, say unpin from the start, I can. So again, let's go back and uh, may have confused you there because I was confused. When you right mouse click, I'm pinning that to the start, which is wh where the blocks are. Now, if I go to more, I can pin it to the taskbar. And there it is now down here. And then I can right mouse click it and I can unpin it from the taskbar. So if, you're, if you've got a, a couple of days work to do in a certain program or a certain location or a certain uh, website, you might want to set up a shortcut for it and put it on your taskbar so you can get to it very quickly and then unpin it when you're done with it. Some other useful tricks, of course, and uh, our friend Ted, if he's in the audience, is a proponent of using keystrokes. And these are some of the ones that you really want to try to remember is open your start member, just hit your Windows key. So if I hit the Windows key, that's what happens. Okay, open settings. If I take the Windows key and the letter I, it opens up the settings. I don't have to, I don't have to use my mouse. I don't have to uh, find it a menu item. I just hit the Windows key and a letter. So if I want to open a file explorer, Windows key and the letter E, opens up my file explorer. Uh, the a Windows key and A opens up the action center. Remember we talked about that earlier. Those of you in the live audience, you're gonna have to watch the video to catch what I talked about, how to set up and what goes on with this uh, action center. You wanna show your desktop, just key uh, the Windows key and a D and it'll minimize everything and show you your desktop. And then uh, Windows key and the letter L will lock your computer that you have to sign in again. So if you've got to get away from your desk real quick, or very uh, extremely quick, uh, quickly, uh, go ahead and just do the Windows key and L. It'll lock it so no one can get into it unless they have your password. If you want to peek at your desktop, Hold the Windows key down and find your comma. Now I gotta find the comma, just here. And then let go of the Windows key and it all comes back. So if I go like this, I'm seeing what my desktop looks like and when I let go of it. So you're just peeking at your desktop. If I wanna open up Task Manager, it's Control, Shift, and Escape. Control, Shift, and Escape and it opens up your task manager. So th these are some useful <laughs> clicks that you should remember. Even make yourself a cheat sheet to help you remember if uh, you don't use them a lot. So that's the Kim Commando tips and tricks. And uh, let's come back over here. Come on, screen. There we go. 
Let's see what else I missed here. Uh, let's take a look at, I believe it was this one. We did talk about some of the features of the Windows 10 that will be coming out next month, which will again be 1803. By the way, the next update will be uh, probably in November. Yeah, here it is right here in October. And it's going to be uh, Redstone 5. They haven't given it a name yet. And it will be uh, um, 1809. There's a video trying to open up here, and I don't really care about the window. Let's see if I can stop it, make this load quicker. And you won't get the, the audio. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, uh, be the first to test the new Windows features. If you're part of the Windows Insiders program, I am not. I try to stay as generic as I can. So if you have questions for me, I can do pretty much what, you, what you're seeing on the screen. That's what I see. So I don't do the updates until they're ready. And uh, so uh, they provided more information on Windows 10 is no longer supported error. Let's see. So what will be in the new one? Uh, the Cortana is going to be connected to Alexa. I probably shouldn't say that in case you're running it on your speakers and I don't want to talk to your uh, Echo. But uh, so they should say Echo and not that word. But uh, there's supposed to be more of a connection between them. Uh, there's going to be more of mixed reality, but uh, I don't expect I will get too much involved in any of that. Now, a lot of the people who are members of user groups probably won't either, although it will make for some interesting uh, uh, meetings if you have somebody come in that, that can answer questions and that can describe some of that sort of thing. Uh, the timeline I mentioned is coming. Uh, probably not after. Uh, it probably won't be included in this uh, update. But let's hope so. Uh, oh, something else they're adding is something that's called picked where I left off. If you have multiple Windows machines or if you have a window mobile, in other words, a, a tablet that's, r that's running uh, Windows, uh, a, a laptop that's running Windows, and a desktop, there's actually going to be a way to do a uh, pick up where I've left off. So if you're working on something, uh, you can stop it on one and then get started on the other, including, uh, uh, let's see, uh, what did I see? Uh, including iPads, iPhones, and Android. So you can be working on a document. You can stop and then start up again on your own Windows machine and right from the same spot. Uh, there's going to be OneDrive files on demand. Uh, there's going to be a control center. Uh, uh, a cloud clipboard and that's coming after the fall creators update so it won't be probably right in the beginning in the final cut but it'll be coming shortly after uh, there's going to be some fluent design there's going to be some new design looks and feels of windows as well available to us in this new version um, and this should be, as I said, coming in the next few weeks. And then shortly thereafter, I'll be doing uh, uh, a complete session on all of the new things that are part of the fall, I'm sorry, the spring creators update, also known as 1803. Okay, any questions? I think we can uh, wind it down now. Been going close, close to an hour. Uh, any questions from the hall, Stan? Okay. Anybody got any comments or questions? I do have one. When you were showing us the Windows 3.0 and 3.1, I think I've commented on this before, but I actually still have a five and a quarter inch hard drive, which is got Windows 3.1 installed on it. And the advantage of that, 
operating system was it was not hardware dependent. Whatever machine you put it in, it didn't relate to the CPU or the video card or anything else, motherboard. I can still put that in a modern computer and it comes up and, and runs. Just, just. Uh, uh, yeah, if you remember those early versions of Windows, they actually loaded DOS first and then ran Windows as an application. Well, it, it and so that's so that's what's being done, and that's why it wouldn't depend. It wouldn't rely on the hardware. Well, it was very simple and easy. Yeah, and we as we get more and more uh, benefits and and capabilities, it becomes more complicated. So the the, the question of uh, a toaster is very simple. You turn it on, and maybe you adjust the temperature, and that's it. You got two controls. But everything else does get to be a lot more complicated, and especially for those people who don't touch it for month to month, uh, having them become competent and comfortable is, uh, is a challenge for sure. And, and, pe and people have a really uh, difficult time keeping up with Windows if they don't require a lot of video and a lot of horsepower, and, and most people don't. That's why I've also uh, become involved with Chromebooks uh, as an alternative. But I do use Windows. I do, my main machine is Windows, and I do have a Windows uh, uh, a, a tablet laptop uh, that I use extensively as well. So uh, I'm still very much into Windows, but I have found that the, the Chromebook uh, does me very well as, uh, as a secondary computer. So, uh, you know, uh, if, if Windows becomes too, too difficult to maintain and you don't really need a lot of extras. You're not doing uh, a lot of heavy gaming. And when I say heavy gaming, I'm not talking about running uh, uh, games like poker or uh, solitaire or any of those. I'm talking about the heavy duty uh, video type games. Uh, those don't do well on other operating systems uh, uh, like Chrome, but they do very well, of course, on Windows because you can get enough uh, storage, you can have enough memory to make those things work and the speed of the processor. Or if you're doing a lot of video editing, uh, you need to stay with Windows or with a Mac. Uh, but otherwise, some of these easier uh, systems uh, are, are something to consider as well. Uh, but Windows is the mainstream. And uh, I did read this last uh, couple of weeks that of all of the Windows 10 machines that are out there, 75% are now are on the latest update, which is 1709. And that soon will be updated again, as I said, to 1803. So you need to start preparing for that happening. And so you want to make sure you're backed up again. You want to make sure you've got room. And you want to make sure that your data is nice and safe as well as backed up. Um, no questions, uh, Stan. That's all I have for this month. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. This has been the Windows SIG of the Central Florida Computer Society for March 11th, 2018. I thank you for joining us. I'm going to stop the recording and then we can talk for a few moments and stop.